All right, so again, welcome to the Developing Python Components webinar. Um, the content for the webinar is going to be related to how we can take our knowledge of scripting in Python inside of Grasshopper a little bit further, uh, with the point being that we can actually create our own component inside of the Grasshopper interface, um, both develop it and then store it as a user object that we can use later. So Python can be used in Rhino 3D and in Grasshopper, offering a powerful way to extend your parametric definitions. Beginning with a presentation on the main principles and applications of scripting with Python and Grasshopper, this webinar will incrementally unpack a diverse set of programming techniques through a series of live exercises. With two instructors offering guided curriculum and continuous support, it is our goal to provide you with an in-depth and personal learning experience. Additional topics that we will cover will include how to set up your first, first Python component, accessing the available methods from Rhino 3D, and specifying the correct input and output settings. And as we mentioned on our Facebook page this morning, we also have a special exercise prepared for you on how to create your own data trees inside the Python script editor so that the output can be uh, organized for use beyond in the Grasshopper definition. So we're really excited about that. So I am Gil Akos, and here with me is Ronnie Parsons, and we are Mode Collective. Uh, Mode is a multidisciplinary design collective. We're, we're located in Brooklyn, New York, and it's comp comprised of three interrelated entities, which are Lateral Design and Lab. And in Lateral, uh, we work directly with individuals, artists, designers, etc., uh, to realize ideas and explore idea ideas coming into the world. Uh, the design portion of our activities is where we look at uh, particular um, elements of design research and develop spaces, products, etc. And in the lab portion, this is our online share source initiative consisting of learning content related to design and technology. So uh, this is Mode Lab. This is the website where it currently lives, and you all um, should have um, registered for this webinar through the website. And this is where we share all the knowledge related to design technology um, and post our upcoming events, uh, again, such as webinars and workshops. Um, so within Lab, um, uh, recently, we've, uh, we held the last lab, which was on topological modeling and 3D printing. So these are some of the um, uh, kind of live action shots from the workshop, uh, where we looked at how you could start with simple primitive geometries and look at different ways of smoothing them um, and preparing that model for 3D output via 3D printing. It's a lot of fun. Um, and is actually leading up to some other events we have coming up, which we'll mention a little bit later. And also, um, <clears throat> uh, we'd, we'd love, if you, love it if you could connect with us on Facebook. Uh, this is the way for us to, um, to communicate with you the most relevant, recent, and recent updates regarding what we're up to. And we're really trying to um, engage you as a community of uh, individuals interested in the things that we're uh, sharing, um, and we're really hoping that this can be a place for the community to grow um, laterally in addition to us sharing with you that you might actually connect with other people as well. So what are we going to cover in the webinar today? Um, well, the topics are going to include what is Python and how do I create a script? How do I set up a Python component and edit, edit its code? Proper applications for using Python and Grasshopper? And understanding the differences between item, list, and tree access settings. Outputting data trees from your Python component. And lastly, packaging a custom user object. So a couple of notes before we go further um, regarding administration. Um, the webinar is going to be two and a half hours, and we'll um, periodically stop for a question and answer sessions. And this is really a way for us to um, directly engage you and for you to feel that uh, you can ask any question and we'll address it together as a group. Uh, the webinar will be recorded and distributed later. Uh, we'll take the video and break it into a sequence of shorter videos so you can easily 
uh, watch them online and reference the, those videos um, at any point, come back to the exercises, etc. Um, we'll also be sharing all of the uh, instructor files. So we've uh, shared some files with you before the webinar started. Um, if you didn't see the message, I'll recopy the link into the uh, chat window on the GoToMeeting interface. So those are going to be the source files for the uh, webinar, but we build all of them um, from scratch together. So we'll share any uh, different versions that we create on the fly with you after the uh, webinar concludes. Okay, um, so Ronnie and I are con conducting this webinar simultaneously, and um, I'll be presenting, and Ronnie will be answering technical technical questions on the fly, and he will redirect any relevant topics for us to address uh, as a group. And the idea here, again, is that we really want to create a kind of live experience for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started um, with the webinar content proper. Okay, let's take just one second. Uh, we received a message that um, there may be some access issues with the file. So you should be able to download all of the files as a zip from this link. I'll copy and paste it once more into the chat window. Okay, and if you do have any um, issues with the uh, accessing the files, just um, drop a message into the questions window. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started then. Um, we said that we're going to be developing Python components um, inside of Grasshopper, so let's just quickly review uh, what Grasshopper is, right? It's a node-based algorithm editor integrated with 3D, Rhino 3D's modeling tools. So it's a plugin for Rhino that allows us to access Rhino's modeling uh, methods and also some other ones as well that are outside of the scope of Rhino. Um, but we do it with a logical diagram, right? We define logical relationships between multiple design parameters, thereby creating a parametric model. Now this is great. It falls under the uh, category of a visual programming application. And that's really good for those of us who are visually oriented um, we, especially in the creative fields. But what that means is that we also have to define everything before we start. So um, working with Python scripting inside of Grasshopper is a way for us to um, look at some alternative methods for approaching uh, our design process. So if we're going to be using Python inside of Grasshopper, um, this may be a review, a brief review for some of you that participated in the introduction to Python scripting and Grasshopper webinar a couple weeks ago. But just very briefly, Python is a general purpose interpreted high-level programming language whose design philosophy emphasizes code readability. That's a little bit of a mouthful, but what that means is that we can use Python to do a lot of different things. And it's also very powerful. It's a high-level programming language. So we can do uh, a lot of things in a lot of different applications. But the nice thing is that the de design philosophy behind Python um, emphasizes us being able, as humans, to read an abstract computer language, which is what any uh, script or code is going to be written in. Um, so uh, the Python for Python is also available within Rhino as, a well, as well as a few other modeling applications and just uh, broadly as a programming language. Um, some of those include Blender and Maya. Um, but we're going to be focusing on how we can work with Python inside of Rhino. Um, so if you were going to do that inside of Rhino, um, you could access the Python uh, script editor. This, again, has to be in Rhino 5. We can't use Rhino 4 for this. This would be to, you could look under the Tools menu, Python script edit. And what that's going to do is allow us to write a script, which here's an example of some simple, uh, of a simple Python script. Write a script that's actually going to be translated through Rhino script most of the time. And that's going to allow us to access the kind of Rhino core. Right? So once we've opened up that script editor, 
um, we can start to type out our script and look at the different ways to access the Rhino script syntax methods as well as uh, the help, right? So if you were to go to help right here, you could find the Rhino Iron Python help menu. And the uh, Rhino Iron Python just means that it's Rhino's version of using Python. So whenever we want to use Python script inside of Rhino 5, these are the methods um, that are um, documented as well as uh, allow us to, um, it gives us a, a kind of a hint or an example file written in Python script. So let's take uh, just one second to review that. So if we go to uh, bounce over to Rhino 5, so open it if you don't already have it open. Um, and we're going to go to Tools, Python Script, Edit. All right, so here's my Python script editor, and it has some old files in it that I was working on previously. Um, so here, here's the basic editor, right? Again, it kind of floats on top of Rhino. We can start to type something like, this is my script, right? We have these drop-down menus over here allowing us to review what um, methods we have. And down here, it gives us a, uh, some hints, some information for that method, including what the inputs are and what it returns. All right, so if I wanted to add a curve, right, it asks me for the points, degree, and then it will give me that curve as a result. All right, so a lot of the methods are actually going to be echoing the Rhino methods, the same way that if you went to create a curve in Rhino, right, it asks for the points, which is going to be in sequence through the user interface, and the degree. Hit OK. Now we have a curve. Okay. 